Bill and Barb Smith, uh, who are providing the music for us today. Uh, please sing along. All the lyrics for the songs are printed out for you in the bulletin. If you are able, I ask you to please rise. Our opening song for today is How Great Thou Art. Oh, that adoration 
encouraging one another and all the more to see the day drawing near. For if we go on sinning deliberately after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice of sins, but a fearful expectation of judgment and a fury of fire that will consume the adversaries. Anyone who has set aside the law of Moses dies without mercy on the evidence of two or three witnesses. How much worse punishment do you think will be deserved by the one who has trampled underfoot the Son of God and has profaned the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified and has outraged the spirit of grace? For we know him who said, Vengeance is mine, I will repay. And again, the Lord will judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. But recall the former days when, after you were enlightened, you endured a hard struggle with suffering, sometimes publicly exposed to reproach and affliction, and sometimes being partners with those who are treated. For you had compassion on those in prison, and you joyfully accepted the plundering of your property, since you knew that you yourself had a better possession and an abiding one. Therefore, do not throw away your confidence, which has a great reward, for you have need of endurance, so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what is promised. For yet a little while, in the coming will one will come and will not delay. But my righteous one shall live by faith, and if he shrinks back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed, but of those who have faith and preserve their soul. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 15. As we draw near to God in the midst of the sinful world, remain focused on Jesus, for he will give us peace, strength, and joy, so we can complete our journey towards righteousness. Verse 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself, so that you may not grow weary or being hearted. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted the point of shedding your blood, and have you forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as sons? My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of our Lord, nor weary when he is hurt by him. For the Lord disciplines the one he loves, and chastises every son whom he receives. It is for discipline that you have to endure. God is treating you as sons. For what son is there whom his father has not disciplined? If you are left without discipline, in which all have participated, you then are illegitimate children and are not sons. Besides this, we have had earthly fathers who disciplined us, and we respected them. So shall we not? much more be subject to the Father of spirits and live, where they disciplined us for a short time as it seemed best to them, but he disciplined us for our good that we may share in his holiness. For the moment, all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant, but later it revealed the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Therefore, lift your drooping hands and strengthen your weak knees and make straight paths for your feet, so that what is lame may not be put out of place, but rather be healed. Strive for peace and for everyone, and for holiness which, of which no one will see the Lord. See it too that no one fails to obtain the grace of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We 
rise to the gospel here. Our gospel reading for today is taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 14, to lengthen verses. As many people were following Jesus, considering whether or not they should make the commitment to become his disciples, he explained that drawing close to them comes at a cost. Now great crowds accompanied Jesus, and he turned and said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not love his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, and even his own life, less than me, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. But so therefore, any one of you who does not renounce all that he has cannot be my disciple. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Amen. to you, O Christ. Now, having heard the words of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and since he has gathered us all together here this morning in his presence, we now confess our faith boldly in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, please be seated. At this time, I invite the children to come forward for a children's message. <laughs> Person or a bad person, a short person or a tall person. 
We should help everyone, right? Yes, talk about it. Ah, if a person is trying to do a bad thing to you, or, well, if they run away, then let them go. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. Well, you need to use, you, you need to use your best judgment, okay? But we, we're here to try to help everyone. Well, try this, okay? All right? If someone needed your help, would you help them even if it caused you to be uncomfortable? If the answer is yes, please stand up. We're going to try something out here. It shouldn't depend on who it is. All right, let's say that this is a that this is that this is someone who God loves. Okay? This is someone who God loves. And if you are willing to help someone who God loves, even if it makes you uncomfortable, please stand up. Well, yeah. I'm gonna... Whoa. This is going to be a really short children's message, guys. <clears throat> okay. Um, Kylie? This is good. All right. <clears throat> so, let's see. Got a question for you. Okay. Did you eat dinner last night? <laughs> I know it was a while ago. <laughs> you didn't eat dinner. Okay. It was like, okay. But typically, you usually eat dinner, right? And typically, you usually eat breakfast, right? And typically, how many lunches do you bring to school? One. You eat at school, okay. How many lunches do you eat at school? One, okay. Let's say you come across somebody who is hungry, who did not eat dinner or breakfast. Would you be willing to give them your one lunch? Even if it was gonna make you hungry the rest of the day. Okay, that's good. So you would be willing to help them even if it made you feel uncomfortable, right? Okay, so let's kick it up a notch, all right? So would you, if, if someone needed your help, would you help them even if it caused you some pain? Okay, okay what type of pain? Here we go, all right? So, all right, let's say it's springtime and we live very close to the Mississippi River. Let's say that you, you heard that um, the Mississippi River was starting to flood. There was a family whose house lived right next to the river, and when the river came up, it flooded their house, destroyed everything in that house. And there was a girl who lived in that house that lost everything. You heard about this in school, okay? And you decided to give her half of your toys. You don't have toys? Half of your things. <laughs> half of your clothes. Half of everything that you have because she has nothing. Would you be willing to do that? Think about it. She's got nothing. You're in church. What is she <laughs> not It is a lot of money, but you know, hey, can I, I Mom and Dad, I think that they would, you know, half is better than nothing, right? Okay, do you, any of you guys, would any of you guys be willing to give, give away half of your toys? All right, go ahead, stand up, all right? All right, oh, look, yeah, this is good. Oh, all right, this is awesome. And you know what? If you give away all of your, half of your toys, sorry, half, all right? Whew. Is that going to make you feel happy? Yeah. It's going to cause a little bit of pain, right? But if you give away things that somebody really needs, it's going to make you happy, right? Now, let's say that someone is going to die. They have a sickness that's inside their body, okay? 
and what happens is, is it's causing one of their body parts on their inside, which is caused a kidney, yeah, yeah, you know about it, it's a kidney, and it's not working. It's an unnamed child of God, okay? This is just a story, okay? This is nobody right now that I know, okay? But let's say that this happened, and you found out about it, okay? And this person was going to die unless someone gave them one of their kidneys. Now, keep in mind, God gave everybody two kidneys. And you really only need one. Raise your hand if you would be willing to give a kidney to that person to save their life. Yeah? That would hurt a lot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure, they could. There, there could be somebody else, you know. But if you could give away half of all your stuff, what's a kidney? <laughs> a it, is a, it is a lot. Okay, so, um, so, you people that um, that are willing to give a kidney, imagine, okay, yeah, there's going to be a lot of pain when you go to the hospital and they give you an operation, okay, and they remove your kidney, but then a couple of days later, you know what's going to happen? No, you're not going to die. You're going to be fine. You can still live a good, healthy, long life. Okay, but what's going to happen a couple of days later is you're going to go back to the hospital and you're going to see that person who's getting better. And they're going to say, thank you for saving my life. You've got a lot of toys. Okay, remember that. When <laughs> okay, now what do you think? Is that, is that going to make you feel really good? Is that going to make you feel so good that it may make your pain go away for a little bit? Is it worth it to go through that pain so that someone else can live? You're right. It's just like Jesus. Okay? Will you guys pray for me? Dear God, thank you for your son Jesus who gave up everything so that we could go to heaven. Help us love the people around us. And help them learn about you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Kylie, for being so brave at the beginning. Services 
online. They want to come. And they also want to take part in some of the special events and the outreach opportunities that the church is doing. But there is only so much time and energy that they have left. So now they are very careful about what they commit themselves to. What about the young families? Well, it's assumed that they are simply not interested. Why bother? They've seen their parents pull away. But some of their grandparents are still going to church, reading the Bible, learning about Jesus. But the younger generations don't know why. Which leads me to ask the question, are people drifting away from the Lord because they don't see or understand the benefits that come from all of this? I think so. We are doing the opposite. There are many people here who have made the commitment to become a disciple of Jesus. Who are doing everything that they can so that they can strengthen their relationship with the Lord. They are learning more about God as they come to worship frequently and as they read the Bible at home. Not only that, but as we desire to draw closer to God, as we commit to love Jesus first, as we willingly take up our crosses and follow him, and as we give up the things that are getting in the way of our relationship with Jesus, the people around us are taking notice. And some of them are causing you much grief over it because they don't want to change. Over time, this is going to cause you much trouble and hardship. But despite all of that pain, uh, many of us are willing to endure through it because we know the benefits of doing so. Disciples of Jesus will do whatever is necessary to draw closer to him because we want to know for sure that we are going to be going to heaven after we die. No doubts at all. And we also want to lead the people around us to our Savior as well. So that they can also experience an eternal life with us in the new creation. Now, some of the members are willing to go through much as a disciple of Jesus because we want to become, <clears throat> excuse me, because we want to become like him, who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross. Now, wait a minute. It's one thing to, to give your lunch to someone who's hungry. It's another thing to give your clothes to goodwill. I can even see giving a kidney to someone who's about ready to die. But Jesus is talking about the joy that he experienced when he was on that cross. Jesus endured the cross because of the joy that he was about to experience. <coughs> joy in the midst of all of that suffering. Yes. Jesus experienced joy because he knew that that horrible sacrifice could lead you to an eternal life with him. 
through the forgiveness of sins. Your gain was worth all of his pain. Imagine that. Jesus loves you so much that he was willing to give up everything, even his own life, so that you could be saved and that he could be with you forever. Wow. But Jesus gave up everything to you. And now, in response to God's mercy and grace, we should be willing to give up everything that is sinful for the sake of Jesus. Jesus said, renounce all that you have. It is also written that we should lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely. Will that be hard? Yes. Painful? Of course. Just try to give up those sins that you love so much. But imagine all the benefits that you will receive. We want to become like Jesus. That means that we need to get rid of every single aspect of our life that is sinful. Because like Jesus, we want to lead the people around us to eternal life. The people around you are watching. That means that what you say and what you do will lead people either closer to Jesus or it will push them away. Let me give you an example. Recently, as I was scrolling through a Facebook, I, I came across a post of someone I knew years ago. And they wrote, This is why I have not gone to church for five years. It seemed like she was proud of it. My heart sunk. She continued. <coughs> Because a member of my congregation shared this online. And then as I looked down, scrolled a little bit, it was a political post about how our country would be better off if one particular candidate were no longer living. You see what I mean? As a Christian, people are watching, and they are listening to what we say. Think about it. Are you leading people closer to Jesus by your actions and by what you're saying out there? Or are you pushing them away? If you are willing to do everything you can to be like Jesus, it will be hard, painful, impossible for you to do without God's help. But trust me, it's worth it. Because when you lead the people around you to eternal life, this will cause you much joy right now in the midst of all of your troubles and hardships. This is going to give your life purpose. Disciples of Jesus looked to him, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Are you tired? Weary? been doing this for quite a long time. Maybe it's time for you to do the unthinkable and make the decision, the commitment to draw closer to Jesus. Because 
He will give you the strength and the peace to persevere. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he will also equip you to do his work. His ministry, his will in this sinful world. For it is written, fear not, for I am with you. I will strengthen you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. And you think that's just uh, some prophet by the name of Isaiah saying this uh, 700 years before Jesus was born? No. This is a promise that God is making to you right now through the prophet Isaiah. Fear not. I am with you. Are you weak? Weary? God says, I will strengthen you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. You see, if you commit yourself to step out in faith, to draw closer to Jesus, he is going to give you the strength to do so. And not only that, but much more. So, let us run with endurance, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith. Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself, so that, get this, you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. Jesus did it for you. And now, for his sake, he is asking you to make the commitment to do everything that you can to lead the people around you to him so that through his church, he can make disciples. But we're tired. We are weary. I hit the snooze button four times before getting up this morning. I did. It's hard to make the decision that your body does not want to do, that your mind does not want you to do. But the Holy Spirit inside you is encouraging you do it. So, lift your drooping hands and strengthen your weak knees and make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may not be put out of joint but rather be healed. Strive for peace with everyone. Everyone. And for the holiness without which no one will see the Lord. You see what the writer of Hebrews is talking about? He's not just talking about our eternal well-being, but also the eternal well-being for the people around us. How much joy do you get from waking up in the morning and realizing that both of your kidneys are working fine? Raise your hand. Do you really experience joy from that, John? <laughs> I don't. I don't even think about it, you know. But if you give that to someone else, then I guarantee you, when you wake up and you think about that person, that's going to cause you some joy. Because the decision that you made, even though it hurts, helps someone extend their life longer. Now imagine how much joy you would receive if you were able to extend the gift of eternal life to someone. Our text for today says, see to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God. 
Keep in mind, if you want to experience the same joy that Jesus experienced, you need to follow him. Become like him as his disciple. He will give you the energy to do it. But will all of that effort be worth it? Of course it will. What you and the people around you will gain from all of this is far beyond our understanding. In the name of Jesus, amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, guard and keep our hearts and minds on Christ Jesus. Amen. At this time, we will sing the song of the day. Here I am, Lord. Stars of God, I will be.
At this time, I invite you to please rise if you are able. So, as we continue our worship service this morning with the prayers of the church. Let us pray for the whole Church of God and for Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us into the faith and for encouraging us to follow your Son, Jesus, so that our questions can be answered. For the power of your Holy Spirit, help us to make the commitment to become disciples of Jesus in the midst of this sinful world, so that as we remove what is sinful in our lives, we may lead the people around us to you and the blessings of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of all, it is with great thanks that you have moved this congregation and our friends to support the ministries here at St. Paul, the prayers, works of service, and financial offerings. Lord God, at this time we ask you to bless all of these gifts that we have placed before you. Use them so that the good news about Jesus will continue to be heard of and witnessed in our communities, so that more souls may be brought into your everlasting kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal Father, we pray for Casey Patterson, who is celebrating her birthday today. We also pray for Kyle Eggy, Sherry Kronzak, Jim Cox, Todd Williams, Travis Schuler, Hamilton Marker, and John Bernhardt, who are celebrating their birthdays this week. And we pray for Dick and Corrine Butel, Butel, and Paul and Ruth Kennard, who are celebrating their anniversaries this week. Lord, continue to watch over and bless them in this life with good health and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of love and tender mercy, we humbly ask you to provide healing to all in need. We specifically pray for all those who are sick. We pray for Jamie Novus, friend of Lisa Hans, who is recovering from surgery. We pray for Anna Henry, Norma Putnam, Sandy Reeser, Betty Cox, Kathy Richmond, Alan Pashke, Haley Walters, Wayne Haas, Mark, Sam Siangi, Marianne Murphy, Dale Wooster, Johnny Ebert, Sandy Ebert, Jim Burgett, Amanda Ambrosia, Lorelai Mitchell, Janiel Haas, Sherry Kronzak, Diana Heidenreich, Shirley Eggy, Mary Ambrosia, Ann Paschke, Esther Heidenreich, Sherry Eggy, Morris Crew, Leona Trost, and John Haas. And Lord, we praise your holy name for all who have experienced encouragement and healing from you this week through your grace. At this time, we also pray for all of those who are in our hearts and minds this morning. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Oh, please be seated.
this time we will celebrate the Lord's Supper. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. For this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. For this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With you too.
Please rise. May this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen, preserve, and keep you in the one true faith until life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us to do the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Receive the Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. Amen. Now please remain uh, standing. There are some people in your life that um, you've probably been praying for for a long time who have, over the years, have uh, drifted away from the Lord. And it's hard. It's painful. You continue to pray for them, but it seems as if nothing that you do will bring them back. I'm here to tell you that there's still time. The Lord has not forsaken them. The Lord is here with you. The Lord is reaching out to them as well. And each time you as you say that prayer for your loved one, to ask God to open their hearts and their minds to receive the good news, for once I would like for you to think about what it would be like to be standing before the Lord with them. Imagine that joy right now. And that will help you persevere for the rest of your life to continue to pray for them, to continue to lovingly and patiently reach out to them. Let us sing with great joy a closing song I can only imagine.
just a couple of uh, brief announcements for you. Special thanks to Bill and, and Barb Smith. Um, your, your music today just fit in perfectly. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, uh, immediately after this uh, worship service, uh, between uh, 10 30 and 11, uh, we will have an adult Bible class um, up here. And uh, we're going to be talking about the, um, the readings that we have. Um, very hard readings for us to, uh, to hear, um, even, even today. But um, if you would like to receive some encouragement and, and hope, please just stick around for adult Bible study uh, today. Uh, coming up, we have uh, Confirmation Sunday, uh, next Sunday, and then, um, which is also Palm Sunday, and then we will also be having, um, we will be celebrating uh, Holy Week next week. So um, Thursday night, 7 o'clock, Monday, Thursday, service with communion, a Good Friday, uh, 7 o'clock. Um, with uh, the uh, with communion, and then Easter Sunday morning, two weeks from today. Uh, the youth will be uh, selling cinnamon rolls, and uh, we will also be having an Easter egg hunt for all of the little ones. Um, and yes, if you, as a grown up, want to run around and find some eggs, we'll have some for you too. A <laughs> um, couple of uh, uh, sign-up sheets that we have um, on the back of the podium. Uh, we are uh, going to be doing uh, Shine again, uh, reaching out into the community uh, with the love of Christ. Uh, this year we're going to be uh, helping people spruce up their yards uh, for spring. So if you know of someone who would benefit from that, uh, please feel free to, to put their name on the sign-up sheet on the right-hand side. Um, and if you would be uh, willing to give us a hand, um, please uh, put your name down on the left-hand side. Uh, we're going to be having um, some of our Sunday school kids uh, help us out and, and our youth as well. Um, there's also another sign-up sheet on, on the podium um, in regards to our upcoming uh, bowling party that we're going to be having on Sunday, April 14th. Um, this is going to be at Stockton Bowling Lanes. And um, so we just wanted to uh, have the opportunity to go out and uh, have some fun. Okay, so please, uh, if you have any um, bowling friends that you would like to invite, please, please feel free to do so. Are there any other announcements that I may have missed? Elaine? Next Sunday after church. Why? Okay. Thank you, Elaine. And? I'd just like to thank everyone for all your prayers. It's it's helped. Thank you. Thank you. Hopefully, this is the last one. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Any other announcements? May the Lord continue to richly bless you and your families as we continue through this holy holiday season. God's blessings.